Hello, good afternoon. Afternoon rather than morning and welcome to Ensemble Conversations. This afternoon I'm very excited to be joined by two theatre creatives. Uh, they run an excellent theatre from Redline Productions at the Old Fitz. Artis Artistic Director Andrew Henry and Executive Director Vanessa Wright. Hello, how are you both? Hello, oh, how are you? Very good. I always ask this as an intro uh, question, although we're sort of emerging from it now. But I wonder how is isolation treating you and how has it been running a theatre plus social distancing? Vanessa, how's it been for you? Um, busy. <laughs> as much as our little theatre has been closed for the duration. Um, but we have been so busy planning next year, the year after, and 2023. So... In a way, it's been a little bit of a blessing in disguise for us to really knuckle down on the admin side of things. And, you know, we've got a couple of tours, national tours that are going around and we've had to postpone a few, a tour from this year. So trying to get it into next year. So we haven't stopped and we're mm. exhausted and we need a break. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, um, I think I said to you earlier, people say, what, so what have you been doing when your doors have been closed? Uh, we, we haven't stopped. It's been it, 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 as busy as ever because most of it is, uh, is pre-planning too. Andrew, how about you? Yeah, look, it's been better than the backdrop that I'm sitting in front of suggests. <laughs> it, this, is, this just happens to be where I can get the best Wi-Fi in my life in, a, in the cellar of the old Fitzroy. But uh Look, it has it has been you know you must you must be silver linings otherwise you'd just I think be suffocated by depression through this through this year. So uh, yeah, as Ness said, it's been it's been planning the next year and the years ahead with some quite big commissions. And then during this time, we've also really jumped ahead in the online space. So we did a couple of very high profile uh, uh, play readings and then a production online, which sort of had a had an audience a hundred times bigger, a uh, hundred times plus than what we would have at the fits uh, regardless. So that's been very good for the company to use this as a positive moment to grow. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, we, uh, yes, we'll talk about those in a moment, but I, I which were, were very enjoyable. You also have, you're also um, expanding. You have new artistic directors coming on board. Can you talk a little bit about that? Andrew. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, 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 the idea was basically, I mean, just as a background for our company, we don't have, uh, we don't have very many staff or we're, we're a small team of four. And, uh, it felt like with the, with the big, bigger, uh, scale and financial shows that we're taking on in, in the years to come, that it was time for the fits to sort of be injected with a new creative energy that, uh, that myself and Ness could work with. Um, so we've sort of put together a triumvirate of um, uh, new artistic directors who are currently, they just got about 190 submissions for shows here. And so they're going through and they'll basically present uh, a program uh, to us in the next couple of weeks that we'll sort of go through and start planning. So it gives the, it, we'd always imagine growing the company where we'd have a home base being the old fits, which we love and is so important to uh, Sydney and Australian theatre. And then we'd also be producing on uh, much larger, uh, um, much larger stages as well. And, and proof of concept of that being things like the relationship we had with the ensemble when View from the Bridge came over there, or the Wolves working at Belvoir. Yeah. Um, it's been a really good moment for uh, company growth, yeah, and those three will be those three will be integral to that. Yeah, fabulous idea. And uh, Vanessa, who who are your new artistic directors? Uh, we have Con Costi, Alexander Balage, and Kat Davies, and they are three firecrackers. Um, mm. And they range from actors to directors to lighting designers, and they've, they know the industry very well. They've been around the traps. They've done lots of shows with us as well at the FITS, um, mm. so they're very familiar with um, the old FITS theatre. And, um, yeah, we just think that they're, the three of them is a great combination to, yes. Yeah, help us out a bit with the running of the fit. And they've, uh, yeah, I know them well and they're a very talented uh, uh, bunch too. And uh, it's mm. great that you are expanding. I think that's such a great idea that you have your home base, but you also have that outlook for uh, bigger stages throughout Australia. I think that's a fantastic way to go and, and to move forward. I'm just interested that um, orphans, gruesome playground injuries with such a fantastic starry cast. Andrew, can you just explain how that came about? And it was, I mean, a huge success, a massive success. There's this 
tiny theatre with this massive worldwide success online. It was such a revelation to a lot of people, I think, in isolation that, wow, this is possible. Yeah, and, and I mean, look, first of all, we should acknowledge that some people are watching us as opposed to the vice president debate, so welcome. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, um, the, the way that, the way that uh, it sort of came about, Mark, was, um, was to be quite frank, the, the gruesome playground injuries and orphans are uh, both plays about um, the denial, or, or all the characters are being, uh, being denied the ability to touch. Um, and they are, um, they exist in isolation. So at that time, there were two shows that, uh, really worked, uh, for what was going on uh, reflectively in the world at the moment. And it was a very ambitious thing. But, uh, mm. when, when we sort of shut the theatre, um, you know, Vanessa and I have got a really great partnership because Vanessa is very practical, very calm, um, and, and very pragmatic. I'm I'm sort of the opposite, and and we were going through we were going through sort of the the crisis of the theatre shutting, but everything's ended, everything we've worked for is gone, uh, and then I just phoned Vanessa and said, right, we're going to get Alec Baldwin and we're going to do Orphans, um, and I just basically, to be honest, ambitiously flicked an email off to the writer of the play who I who I'd known for several years. Mm. and asked him if he would ask Alec. And, and Alec was so cool about it. He was like, yeah, man, I, yeah, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> and um, we, we, and he, was, he was so cool. We just, we just sort of did it. We, we chat for ages on, on while the tech guys were doing their thing in our technical rehearsal. And, you know, he'd talk about his, his experiences in theatre and, and, you know, Aaron mm. Glenane and myself just had our jaws on the floor listening to them. And then Orphans was... Orphans did about 20,000 people watching it, which is a huge, huge number mm -hmm. for us. And, and most importantly, those people buying tickets. And it also really, us getting emails from people in New York or mm -hmm. Amsterdam or London or Florida, just sort of being like, thank you for providing this for us, was really amazing for us. So then we followed that up mm -hmm. uh, by doing gruesome playground injuries. And again, same path, ambitiously going to Roseburn and you and Leslie and John Butler. And then that coming together. Yes. Uh, John Butler, what a great idea that was as well. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, fantastic cast, but what a, what a great layer onto that uh, player that was. Uh, Vanessa... And it wasn't even... Go on. Sorry, I was just going to say, and it wasn't even small. We had to get... Because his internet was so terrible where he was <laughs> in Perth, we, right. had to, we had to send a truck with a satellite on the roof fantastic. to park out the front of his house to, and then rub a fi run a fibre lead into his living room to play the music so it was it was a full-blown production that we were organizing and uh, vanessa how tricky was all that dealing with all those actors it was that like actors in my experience are very happy to come on board and help out particularly you know during this this crisis was that easy for you to negotiate yeah absolutely they were all so wonderful we mm. had um yeah alec Baldwin in Orphans, we had Rose Byrne in Gruesome Playground and you and Leslie. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they were just so beautiful and I think um, so giving of their time being in different continents of the world um, and throughout the rehearsal period as well, we just did a couple of reads and they, everybody was so willing to, you know, participate in this and just to still do something theatre-y. Um, yeah. you know, yeah, during yeah. those COVID times. Yeah. yeah, it was lovely working with them. It, it, it is wonderful, the support. I think if anything comes out of a, a terrible global pandemic, it's the idea of the support and the reaching out to, uh, especially in, in the acting community, I found that it's been wonderful, um, particularly mm -hmm. with different theatres talking to each other and checking in on each other. I think that's... Uh, and we should keep doing it, even when the, even when the virus is over. Let's uh, keep mm -hmm. continuing this feeling of goodwill. Now, now you have a theatre. How many does it hold, Andrew? How many in the actual Fitz uh, arena? Legally, uh, yes, legally, legally, <laughs> legally sixty-two. So uh, twenty thousand people. That would. How many years would you be running that production if? Uh... <laughs> yeah, 
I, I reckon we'd be set. What would that be next? To like twenty twenty five or something. I mean, because because the other the other things. Remember, then we followed those two up with Toby Schmidt's doing an actual season of a play. Yes. And each night on that, that was doing like fifteen hundred people a night as well. So the Fitz could could have done those shows till twenty thirty, I guess. Yes. So we could have been on a beach somewhere and just let the shows run. That's right. They just record it and let it run and run every night. Um, yeah, but. What shows next year? Not that I know you can't talk about much because uh, you, you'll launch like us. We've got a launch coming up in October for an opening in January. But have you have there been many discussions about the shows and the plays that you couldn't do this year and what you might be bringing back and how much new material would be coming back? Uh, Vanessa, uh, how, how hard has that decision been? Um, oh, my dog. Oh, uh, it's been quite difficult. Um, hello, dog. You know, <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> We've really had to work in with um, the producers if they're available, if they've still got their budget, yeah. um, and you know the, the current actors and how it's going to work with them. Mm. Plus, we also want to bring in new work as well, which is why we've also um, opened up for submissions for next year as well. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be the great job that's going to hand over to the new three co ads to go over all of that and to program hopefully right. another kick-ass season for next year. So you say, here you go, guys, sort this out. Yes, <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Andrew, how, how hard was it, is it, though? Because with independent producers and independent productions, it sometimes seems that it's only a brief time that everybody can come on board to do a project. Has that been very, uh, very hard to juggle? You mean in terms of transferring? Yes, sorry, for next year, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it will be a juggle and it will continue to be a juggle, uh, I suspect, for the next five or six weeks. Mm. We actually, we're actually kind of, I think, just off the top of my head, I think we're only dealing with three shows, potentially four. I actually, when I programmed this year's season, I didn't program anything uh, after October 28th because I wanted to uh, guess, or rather, I wanted time to figure out what show we would do during the US election. Um, so we actually were going to be dark during this time anyway, um, right. with me choosing a production that we would have on. Um, we there there are some shows that have been part of this season that may not be appropriate for next year, and they might go into the year after. Yeah. It's going to be an ongoing. It's going to be an ongoing thing. Also, bearing in mind that the financial hit, not just of the theatre companies, uh, but but the 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 actors and the designers and the directors. I mean, they've been hit the most. I mean, ultimately, without those guys in the building, I mean, we're all real estate agents, really. Hmm. Um, well, well, and, the, and so we've also got to be careful because the independent space is not a lucrative space. So for them to come back and work, we want them to be in a great frame of mind, really positive, and we've got a lot of work to allow that to be a possibility for them to continue the independent sector really because i think it's a huge risk yeah. of being destroyed yeah the creative freelancers particularly as you say have been hit so hard during this crisis mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, actors who may have one gig a year or creatives that have one or two plays suddenly don't have anything um and yeah. that's been uh, absolutely uh, devastating for everybody the sooner we can open and the sooner we can get back the better the Old Fitz is yeah. a landmark institution uh, running as a theatre for many, many years and many actors have played there. I myself even have played there. Um, and and you, you play there because of the love for the space and you're cramped into a, it was at that time anyway, a cramped dressing room backstage and uh, it's a, in a pub that can sometimes be noisy and yet you love being there. What is it about that space, do you think? Why do people want to be there? Why, why, what is it about that Old Fitz, I suppose history, but what, what is it about that unique space? There's something about the fits that is it's it's kind of it's kind of like a film when you arrive. The the the, <laughs> the 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 experience of sitting in that theater is that it is one of the most intimate in the country. So there's the intimacy of uh, sitting in the audience and having the actor that that far away. That's a that's a very cliche thing to say, um, mm -hmm. but it's true. There's an environment there that is electric when you have all of the um, audience in this little cauldron. But it, what, the, what, what, what is so special about this place is the before, in the interval and after, which is you arrive at sort of an old world. You mm. have uh, a beautiful old building that is frequented by uh, characters from Lay Girls fame to uh, they're on parole 
um, for, you know, something awful, um, to really affluent upper, um, there's no, the, the, the place doesn't discriminate. It is a place for all to come. And it's the living room of a lot of special people. There's an environment here that you can't replicate. It just exists in the bones of this place. Um, I mean, not so much here, not many people see down here, but mm. in the bones of this place is an experience. It's a real, um, it's a really special old world that we're kind of losing as, as, as this, um, as more buildings get bulldozed or new apartments get put up. This is really old school, mm. um, old school theater world. And Vanessa, when you guys took over a few years ago, you had a bit of a, 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 a refurb of the idea, the look of uh, the old fits in terms of Redline coming in and doing something special. Was that difficult to uh, to make that transition from what the old fits was and was becoming to what it is now? Um, look, I think we really wanted to put the main focus on the old fits at the time, not mm. so much Redline Productions. That was to come later. We really yeah. wanted to come in and build that place back up to what it potentially was years ago with Tamarama Rock Surface. And we just wanted to get the um, really get out there and support the entire arts community and just put on some you know great shows that was going to build the audience base back in and just to really make that um, theatre you know, such a special place that it is and deserves to be. Um, and that's what, that's our main, that was our main focus, was just all, just all about the fits. Um, and this is our sixth year of running the old fits now. Mm. Um, wow. And we're, hopefully we've been able to achieve that so far with so many more good things to come. But it's yeah. It, hmm. It's an amazing journey and it's amazing how quickly things go. Um, I, when I took over as artistic director, you suddenly go, oh, you're suddenly in your fifth or sixth mm. year and, you know, I've been mm. at the Ensemble Theatre for 16 plus years and you think, oh, OK, right, that's uh, that's interesting. Andrew, when you, uh, because you act as well, you're an actor and we first met uh, as you were being an actor, What? Do, how do you decide for you being artistic director what you direct and what you act in and what you go, give over to somebody else? Well, I think the, the the first thing for me personally is not very much, to be honest. You know, in the years that we've run the fits, um, I've done, I've acted in two plays, and I've directed two, and one was this year at as a um, as an online show. Um, that's it was very much. I was just very aware when we came in. I didn't want to sort of make it about me or the opportunities that are. Uh, that I could afford myself. So I think in a way I, I, I kind of stepped back from doing that here, mm. um, opening up opportunities to do stuff elsewhere. But I really wanted this to be a place that that didn't have um, <clears throat> didn't have me in every every couple of shows or whatever. It was just mm. really important too because the industry I, I had lost at that time uh, a, a whole bunch of little independent venues too. So we really wanted to uh, seize the moment and make this a place uh, where everyone could come together. And um, me deciding I wanted to do my Hamlets was not and will not ever be appropriate. So um, <laughs> it was it was just, it was genuinely about sort of stepping back from that. In terms of what I choose to do on the on the directing side of it, it, it genuinely just, just comes up when something pretty special happens. And we just had that with, with Tom Payne, which was the most recent one, which was yep. just sort of a, absolute hybrid that I just had to get my teeth into. Yes, yes. I think, yes, and I agree, same being artistic director, is you have to choose your projects really carefully and it's about yeah. about the theatre, not about you, but then when something suits, you think, okay, that, that suits me, that's what I'm going to do. Absolutely, now, yeah. We, we, we all met on Frankenstein and uh, Vanessa, you were stage managing and, uh, and then went on this huge tour and Andrew, you were Victor Frankenstein. It was one of my favourite all-time rehearsal processes. And I remember saying to Brian Megan, who was in it as well at the time, that you have a picture in your head of how a rehearsal period would go, and you have a picture in your head sometimes, a sort of vague picture of what the production might look like. And this is one of those times that it can be quite rare sometimes that it absolutely matched what was in my head before I even started rehearsal. And that was down to the cast and to you guys and to the hard work you put in. How fantastic was it, I think, to be doing such a show and for such a long time? Because you went on that huge tour, Andrew. 
Yeah. We, I mean, well, first of all, yeah. So I guess in a weird way, Mark, you've just, you've just sort of highlighted the fact that kind of red line is your fault. Um, <laughs> oh, well, so I think I'll be flattered. Because that's, <laughs> because that's, that's where Ness and I met. Um, uh, first of all, it was very, I, I thought it was a, a kind of a revelation, really, uh, for the ensemble. I, I just, it was so out of the box when, I remember when you told me about it and we were going to start at the opera house and then go to the ensemble and then tour for, I think, seven months. Mm. Um, and it was it was um, it was dark, man, and it was uh, physical, and it was such a spectacle because it had, had such a big um, big production internationally that um, an Oscar winning director did with uh, with um, Benedict Cumberbatch and Johnny Lee Miller, and we came into this show with a completely different concept, the most incredible idea of just having one person with a cello on stage. Um, hmm. which was the, the entire thing being scored. And then it, it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a process truly of a whole cast getting together and creating a single performance of a show that really is, still remains of Lee Jones, who played the creature. The most extraordinary hmm. thing I've ever seen on stage um, and that he didn't win the Helpman is still a national game. <laughs> yes. um, but it was just, but it just happened so. It just happened so effortlessly. We were, and, and we got to, we got to. To be fair, I mean, I hadn't travelled very much around Australia, and I got to see so much of it. I'm just very grateful, grateful for it. And it was a, it was a very, very uh, affirming experience about, you know, for anyone that saw it. That, that whole show opened with Lee basically on his own for 15 minutes on stage being born. And every second of that mm. was influenced by everyone else in the show as we all offered things during rehearsal, et cetera. I mean, it was just, it was just really stunning. And I'll never forget that cello my entire life. Yes, that was a wonderful uh, music by Elena Katzchern, and who was commissioned to do yeah. the music for the show. Uh, it was a uh, uh, yes, I I love that setup and that beginning too. Uh, Vanessa, how hard was it to keep everybody in check on tour for so long? Oh, I was fine. I actually <laughs> loved it. I loved it. I lo it, it, it. I really started. I started with the ensemble back in two thousand and eleven. And eleven, you guys yes. were the main reason I came to Sydney as a stage manager, and yeah. I think that's what led us on to, you know, Frankenstein and it was, it was big. It was huge. We did start in um, Sydney and over at the ensemble and go to the opera house. And then we traveled all around Australia nationally with, what was it? A cast of six, I think mm. six or seven. seven. Yeah. Um, seven. It was wonderful yeah. to be able to perform that production in all of the venues across Australia. Mm. Um, and it was such a tight knit group. We all, we all just had a ball and, um, it was it was great. I think it was one of the best experiences I've had. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah me too. I also just want to say, if I can, Mark, if you don't mind, Brian Megan, who the ensemble audience know so well, is just simply one of the greatest cooks <laughs> yes. that that and and one of the best people to go on tour with because he, he will set the table. He will come out with. He will prepare yeah. for hours. I mean, he's very good. I got to save so many per diems because of Brian Megan. <laughs> I hope he's watching. I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Uh, yes, he's a, he's a wonder. He's a wonderful organizer too. It, now, a View from a Bridge was what a fantastic, terrific production that we had that came to us, and then uh, it was just it was just beautiful. And you have other productions that go to other places, and that's something you're going to develop. The quality of work and. I, I will say I go to the old fits when it's open as much as I can, and I'm never disappointed. What What do you think Thank it you. is about? I suppose it's choice of creatives and choice of play, but there's such a high quality at the old fits, and that that's down to you guys. That must be it. Must be um, something in the choosing of the project and the creatives involved. How difficult is it to actually get that standard uh, throughout the season, really? Well, I think to be frank, uh, the I have I have I constantly have this um, battle with my dad, not in a bad way, but just um, you know, whenever the word artists are used, it sounds a little bit um, it sounds sounds a little bit grandiose mm. uh, to someone that's not from within the industry. So when artists talk about artists, it all sounds a bit hoity-toity, but. Mm. Um, I genuinely knew from when I came back from studying in Chicago that if you can run a theatre company and kind of stay out of the way, 
um, and just be there to support artists. Um, once you know that you've you've put together a room of of great artists, magic happens, and 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 that's a very simple way of describing something that is very complex. But that's why I think you get that energy. We have had a really good um, track record of it, and a lot of it is down to letting carefully selecting the vision that we want in here from people and then just making our job to support and love and nourish their their vision. Yes, I, I, I agree, absolutely. Um, and as you say, getting out of the way of the creative vision, absolutely, is uh, the way to go. Um, Vanessa, what about the future? What you, I know you've got seasons coming up but how, and the development, as you've explained a little bit about, where you're thinking it will go. Are you uh, excited about the future once we can get back to being up and operating? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's so exciting of what the what we're going to do with the fits. Um, but in addition to that, we've got a children's show. It's just uh, live mm. on stage, which has been adapted for stage by the Andy Griffiths book series. Yep. Um, that's travelling around the country from August next year. Yep. Um, we're also bringing Betty Blockbuster back. That will also be a tour as well. Um, times have been tricky trying to get tours up and running yes. <laughs> during pandemic, but mm. we're doing our best and yep. it's doing really well. And we've also got two huge commissions that we're working on as well. Um, one of them being John Marsden's adaptation of Tomorrow When the War Began. Mm, so nice. that's, they're all big shows very that we're exciting. working on. They very are. Exciting. What do you hope, Andrew, what do you uh, hope theatre is and what can it be, do you think? Great question. Um, <laughs> I know, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I just was told earlier today when I arrived at, at, um, at here at work that um, some people rocked up two, two days ago to see a show um, oh. just because they, they, they'd heard about the place. And, you know, the, the fits at the pub itself is, is shut as well. So it's very, very sort of bleak at the moment. Yes, right. Um, the, what theatre, look, what, what I think theatre 100% can be is it's a, it's, a place, it's a place of shared experience with strangers. Um, a lot of people sort of kick back on the virtual world that we, we dappled in. And I think that virtual world is kind of done for us now as we look much more towards a live experience. But um, the world is really nasty and the world is really mean and it's unkind uh, to each other. Uh, and it's only going to get worse and it's so divided. Whereas the magic of theatre mm. is the, the ability to go in and share share an experience with strangers, which we don't have at the moment whilst uh, the doors to all of our theatres are shut. And those experiences with strangers do change people's lives. They really do. I mean, I can only count on my hand five shows, and I've seen hundreds and hundreds of shows. I can count five experiences that have changed my life and, and changed me as a human being. And uh, theatre is an agent for change. You know, we, we talk about points of view and... and um, and it reflects society. Our society's kind of gone to shit. Um, I think theatre makes the world a better place. It genuinely does. Any opportunity for human beings to come together and listen and hear and feel in their heart other human beings and share other points of view is the way that the world moves forward. And only in live theatre and live performance is that possible, that the person next to you who you've never met can feel the same thing that you're feeling that you can only see at that one moment in time on that night because you both bought a ticket to that show um, and healthy conversation at the bar afterwards. And, and that's, that's the magic of it. And that's, to be honest, the drug of it as well. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with all of that. Fantastic. It'd be great as well to have an audience back. I know you're thinking about opening soon next year. So, I hope it's sooner than later. Um, you're two of my favourite people, and it's been it was no. fantastic working with you when I did, and it's fantastic you're making such a success of the old fits with Red, Red Line Productions, and I wish you all the best for the future, and I cannot wait to come along to your venue again and see another play there very soon. 
Thank we'll you so much. We'll all be much. back at each other's. It's going to be it's going to be brilliant, Mark. We'll it's a, all going to come back, and they're going to be better for it. We'll have a foyer party. Thank you so much for taking time out. I know how busy you are uh, and taking time out to talk to us at Ensemble Conversations. It's been terrific to talk to you as ever, and hopefully see you in a foyer soon. Vanessa, thank you, Andrew, Martha. thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.